Comparative analysis of underground and underwater tunnel. Abstract with the urban population increasing, conurbation is getting more and more crowd, traffic jam happens everywhere. In this case, utilization of the underground and underwater space has become an effective way to undertake this set of problems. Tunnel construction is one of the important infrastructure projects, which is vital for enhancing the transportation networks, especially in congested cities. This review project presents a framework for selecting the appropriate tunneling method and transportation network with respect to the induced ground surface settlements. Parameters which have significant influence on the ground surface settlement will also be discussed in this project. This paper will help the contractors, engineers, and designer in selecting appropriate method and estimating the required cost and time for construction of a tunnel. Keywords, settlement, tunneling method, tunnel geometry, geological condition, parameters affecting tunnel. I introduction. Tunnel construction for transport routes is becoming increasingly important worldwide. Transport is accelerated and optimum protection is provided for the environment and the landscape. Many tunnels are considered technological masterpieces and governments have honored tunnel engineers as heroes. Constructing a tunnel, however, is one of the most complex challenges in the field of civil engineering. Tunnels are attractive solutions for railways, roadways, public utilities, and telecommunications. Worldwide population is increasing rapidly so the need of rapid or quick transportation to counter this approximately three-fourth of earth floor which is underwater is to be used. This gives rise to construction of underwater tunnel. An underwater tunnel is a passage, gallery, or roadway beneath a body of water. Underwater tunnels are used for highway traffics, railroad and subways to transport sewage, oils, gas, or vehicles and also for military and civil defense purpose. Modern underwater tunneling begins by constructing an immersed tube within a pre-dug trench on the river or seafloor. To do this prefabricated sections of steel and concrete tube are floated into position and strategically sunk into the trench. Immersed tunneling is an art of guiding the great natural force, the water, to do engineering works, guiding buoyancy for transportation, guiding water weights for immersion, and guiding hydrostatic pressure for connection. 2. Limitation existing system. 1. Immersed tunnels are often partly exposed, usually with some rock armor and natural siltation, on the river slash seabed, risking a sunken ship slash anchor strike. 2. Direct contact with water necessitates careful waterproofing design around the joints. 3. The segmental approach requires careful design of the connections, where longitudinal effects and forces must be transferred across. 4. Environmental impact of tube and underwater embankment on existing channel slash seabed. 3. Scope and objective. Scope. 1. Due to shortage of land and rapidly growing traffic and population, various underwater tunneling construction techniques should be implemented. 2. As underwater tunnel have shorter routes than bridges and roadways, it saves our important time. 3. Different materials such as oils, gas, and drinking water can be simultaneously transported along with the traffic route. 4. By using advanced technologies transparent tube can be built which gives very aesthetic and attractive view for passengers and tourists. 5. Therefore making the overall project cost effective. Objective. Tunnels are underground passages used for transportation. They could be used for carrying freights and passengers, water, sewage, etc. Tunnels are more economical than open cuts beyond certain depths. Tunnels avoid disturbing or interfering with surface life and traffic during construction. Tunnels prove to be cheaper than bridges or open cuts to carry public utility services like water, sewer, and gas. Feasibility of these constructions in natural materials, such as rock and soil, causes the geological conditions to play a major role in their stability. Aspects of major importance and that is decisive for the feasibility of a tunnel project is geological conditions, construction time, and costs. The objective of this lesson is to provide the general aspects of importance in tunnels, their types and methods of tunneling. For Literature Review 1. Douglas Allen B. and John W. T. Ropkins, 2006, Creating Underground Space at Shallow Depth Beneath Our Cities Using Jackbox Tunneling. This paper describes the Jackbox Tunnel method with example, its use, and detailed about the sensitivity. Jackbox Tunnel is a method of construction that enables engineers to create underground space at shallow depth in a manner that avoids disruption of valuable infrastructure and reduces impact on environment. 2. Kamaladin et al. and Mohammed Javad Vadat Irad, 2010, Choosing TBM for Tabriz Subway Using Multi Criteria Method. Case study of Tabriz Urban Railway Line is presented in this paper. The TBM model is used for construction of tunnel. Two kinds of TBM model suggested. F, Earth Pressure Balance, SS, Slurry Shield, are used and compared for various parametric, environment, technical, and economical effect on the project. 3. Ford, Charles, 1997 Immersed Tunnel Techniques 2. Proceedings of the International Conference organized by the Institution of Civil Engineers in association with the Institution of Engineers of Ireland and held in Cork, Ireland on 23 to 24 April 1997. Thomas Telford, London, United Kingdom, ISBN 9780727267049, pages 368. 4. Moritides, 2008, The Cut and Cover and Cover and Cut Techniques in Highway Engineering. The use of cut and cover and cover and cut methods are studied in this paper for construction of underground tunnels or subways. In this paper, the overview of both the methods is presented which includes describing main features, advantages, and field applications. 5. Maria Grazia di Pilato, Anna Firiani, Federico Perotti, March 17, 2008. Numerical models for the dynamic response of submerged floating tunnels under seismic loading. Earthquake Engineering and Structural Dynamics, Volume 37 Issue 9, pages 1203-1222. Archived from the original on January 5, 2013. The Theoretical Study of Tunnels. A Basics of Tunnels. Tunnel is an artificially constructed underground passage to bypass obstacles safely without disturbing the overburden. Tunnels are created by the process of excavation. Ratio of length to width, in a tunnel, should always be at least in 2, 1. Tunneling is desirable when rapid transport facilities are required which need to avoid acquisition of land for roads. B. Physics of tunneling. 1. Tension, which expands, or pulls on, material. 2. Compression, which shortens, or squeezes material. 3. Shearing, which causes parts of a material to slide past one another in opposite directions. 4. Torsion, which twists a material. C. Tunnel design criteria. Tunneling requires proper design. Every tunnel will have its own geometry, design, alignment, and construction methods. The tunnel design criteria include the following aspects. 1. Spatial requirements. 2. Alignment. 3. Underground stations. 4. Fire life safety, and tunnel systems in operation. 5. Every tunnel should have its own horizontal and vertical alignment, tunnel ventilation, tunnel lighting, electrical and safety equipment, tunnel drainage, fire life safety, and security. D. Investigations for tunneling. 1. Geological investigations relation between bedrock and topsoil. 2. Morphology, petrology, stratigraphy. 3. Electrical resistivity methods positions of weak zones faults, folds, and shear zones. 
6. Development of tunnel and construction methods. Underground tunnel. A cut and cover method of tunnel construction. Cut and cover method of tunnel construction is generally used to build shallow tunnels. In this method, a trench is cut in the soil and it is covered by some support which can be capable of bearing load on it. B. Bore tunnel method. Bore tunnel method is modern technology. In this case, tunnel boring machines are used which automatically work and makes the entire tunneling process easier. It is also quicker process and good method to build tunnel in high traffic areas. See clay kicking method of tunnel construction. This method is used for strong clay soil conditions. This is an old method and used for small works like sewage pipes installations etc. In this method, a hole is excavated into the ground and after some depth tunnel is excavated which is done by the clay kicker which lies zero in a plank at 450 angle. An excavating tool is provided under clay kicker foot. D shaft method of tunnel construction. In this method tunnel is constructed at greater depth from the ground surface. The shaft is built up to the depth where tunnel is required. E pipe jacking method of tunnel construction. Pipe jacking method is used to construct tunnels under existing structures like roadways, railways etc. In this method, specially made pipes are driven into underground using hydraulic jacks. Maximum size of 3.2 meter diameter is allowed for tunnels. Underwater tunnel. A immersed tube tunnel. An immersed tube tunnel is made up of many prefabricated tubes constructed on land, which are then floated and moved to its stretched location by romworks in the sea. The tubes are lowered and connected with each other underwater. I steel shell tunnels. A single steel shell. A single steel shell element has an external steel shell fabricated typically from 10 mm steel plate. This does not have to be the traditional circular steel tunnel shape as can be seen in figure. The steel shell provides strength and water tightness. B double steel shell. The cross section of a double steel shell has two steel skins. There is an inner steel shell, which is thinner than the steel shell of a single shell tunnel and typically 8 mm thick. This outer form plate is slightly thinner than the inner shell at typically 6 mm. Two concrete tunnels. A monolithic concrete element construction. The first, simplest, and most straightforward of the concrete tunnel options is the monolithic element. Each tunnel element is a continuous structure that acts as a beam. B segmental concrete element construction. The segmental form concrete tunnel element was developed from the original monolithic tunnel element to avoid the need for an external waterproofing membrane. C pre-stressed concrete. A variation of the monolithic reinforced concrete element is to pre-stress it with permanent longitudinal pre-stress. This form of tunnel element can have advantages in reducing the amount of longitudinal reinforcement and also the overall compressive stress it provides tends to close any cracks in the concrete, reducing the likelihood of leakage. D composite sandwich tunnel. The use of steel concrete composite sandwich construction is a more recent development that has mostly been promoted in Japan, although a lot of research and testing has also been carried out in the United Kingdom. The concrete is placed between the steel plates, so a very fluid self-compacting mix is required. Placing this concrete and ensuring sufficient compaction and complete filling of the void between the plates is one of the main challenges of this method. B submerged floating tunnel. A submerged floating tunnel, SFT, also known as submerged floating tube bridge, SFTB, suspended tunnel, or Archimedes bridge, is a proposed design for a tunnel that floats in water, supported by its buoyancy, specifically by employing the hydrostatic thrust, or Archimedes principle. 7. Health and safety, and environmental impact in tunneling. A occupational health. Occupational health is seldom allocated the priority it should be, given the number of days lost to ill health. The reasons for occupational health provision are twofold. To address ill health due to work. To ensure fitness for work. B. Welfare and first aid. The provision of basic welfare in tunnels under construction is improving. Space for basic toilet and washing facilities is limited in small tunnels, but in larger tunnels there is enough space for toilet means of boiling water and heating food as part of the TBM equipment aids welfare and reduces the risk from improvised electrical installations. First aid provisions must be available to meet the requirements of the project in terms of shift working and remote working. ET and washing facilities on the TBM or in the tunnel. C. Education, training, and competence. Large tunneling projects may need to set up their own training facilities, for example Crossrail in the UK set up its own tunneling academy to train the large number of workers required for this project. All new employees in the industry should undergo comprehensive induction training. Site-specific training, even for experienced employees who are new to a site, is also necessary. Engineers and managers now undertake training in health and safety matters as part of their professional education and continuing professional development. Defire, flood rescue, and escape. Among the most significant safety hazards of tunneling, to which the workforce is exposed, are fire and smoke. Good housekeeping is another vital precaution in minimizing the buildup of flammable rubbish, which typically in tunneling includes timber, plastic bottles, paper, discarded hoses, and cables. All hydraulic systems should be well engineered. E. Environmental impact. Environmental legislation is becoming stricter globally as awareness of potential impacts increases. At the same time, methods to manage impacts are becoming more sophisticated, and it is essential to understand the issues and how they can best be dealt with, whether as a planner, designer, constructor, or project sponsor. The production of an environmental impact assessment, EIA, is a standard requirement in most countries around the world and is used as a tool for ensuring impacts. F. Tunnel approaches. The major impact of an immersed tunnel scheme generally occurs during construction when disturbance of the waterway and the banks is inevitable. Often, the banks are environmentally sensitive, are recreational areas or protected wildlife areas, or are areas of outstanding landscape importance. In an estuary or tidal river location, constructing the approaches will almost certainly raise environmental issues relating to the intertidal mudflats. G. Marine Works. The main activity in the waterway itself is the excavation, and subsequent backfilling, of the trench for the tunnel. Placing of tunnel elements is relatively fast and causes no real disturbance to the environment. Dredging, by its very nature, stirs up the bed of the river, resulting in an increased amount of sediment in the river. H. Fisheries. Once a tunnel has been completed, there is no long-term effect on the movement of fish up and down the river. The one caveat to this is that if an impressed current cathodic protection system is installed, there is the potential for electric currents to disturb the fish, and this effect should not be overlooked. Algae and water quality. At some tunnel sites there is the possibility of blooms of algae that can hinder construction. These can be a severe handicap to the construction process. As discussed, changes to the water quality during construction can adversely affect the marine biology. Oxygen content and turbidity are factors affecting the quality of marine life and strict limits on the extent of any changes during construction must be imposed. J. Visual aspects and air quality. A tunnel imposes far less visual intrusion on a waterway in the surrounding area than a bridge. Once completed it is often almost invisible, except from the air. These include service buildings, ventilation inlet, and exhaust towers, the architectural appearance of the portals, and the type of approach structures. The tunnel design needs to consider air pollution. 
Overall pollution from the traffic is not increased but that pollution is concentrated. If longitudinal ventilation is being used, then the pollution is concentrated around the portals. Whereas with transverse or semi-transverse ventilation the pollution is concentrated around the exhaust stack. 8. Ground movements and monitoring. Underground tunnel. 8. Ground deformation in soft ground and rock. When tunneling in hard ground, rock, ground movements are not normally a problem, except in squeezing ground conditions, and ground movements propagating up to the ground surface as a result of the excavation are unlikely unless the cover depth of the tunnel is relatively small, i.e. in portal areas, or where the groundwater in the overlying soft ground may be affected. In soft ground, however, displacements can occur due to a number of reasons and these are shown for a shield tunnel on figure. Component 1 is particularly important with open-face tunneling methods. Component 2 can result if there is difficulty keeping the tunneling shield on the correct alignment, or if there is a need to tilt the shield up slightly to prevent it from diving into the ground. Component 3 can be minimized by immediate grouting of the void. Component 4 is usually small compared to the other components once the lining ring is completed. Component 5 can be important for soft clays, and results from the fact that the construction process changes the stress regime locally around the tunnel. B. Horizontal displacements. From the point of view of damage to structures and services it is not only important to determine vertical displacements within the ground, but also the horizontal movements. SH equals SAVI slash H, 7.9. Where SV is the vertical ground displacement, SH is the horizontal ground displacement and Y is the transverse horizontal distance from the tunnel center line. C. Long-term settlements. Long-term settlement is a phenomenon predominantly associated with fine-grained soils and is associated with component 5 and figure above. 1. The tunnel acting as a drain. 2. Time-dependent distortion of the tunnel lining. 3. Time-dependent dissipation of excess poor water pressures due to grouting behind the lining or due to mitigation measures such as compensation grouting. 4. Creep and secondary consolidation processes in soils. 5. Time-dependent closure of the grouted annular gap due to, bleeding and curing, hardening and shrinkage, of the grout, insufficient grout, or loss of grout. D. Ground improvement and stabilization techniques. This section describes a number of techniques that can be used to improve the stability of the ground to aid construction of the tunnel, and in soft ground to reduce slash control ground displacements and hence mitigate the effects of the tunneling operation on adjacent structures. Ground freezing. Lowering of the groundwater table. Grouting. Underwater tunnel. A settlement. In a watercourse carrying a high sediment load, it is desirable to immerse the tunnel elements as soon after completion of dredging and trench cleaning as possible, and to perform the sand flow operation as quickly as possible after the elements have been immersed. B. Risk of sedimentation. Very important in planning the marine activities for forming the foundations to assess the risk of sedimentation and plan for monitoring and cleaning procedures, should it occur. If there is a risk of sedimentation, then exposure time between placing an element and underfilling it should be minimized. C. Behavior in seismic conditions. Sand foundations can perform satisfactorily under seismic load, provided some thought is given to the risks at the design stage. The issue to guard against is preventing liquefaction. This can be achieved by the selection of an appropriate grading or through stabilization. In highly active zones, a gravel or grouted gravel solution is more likely to give an appropriate solution. D. Ground improvement. Ground improvement may be required for a variety of reasons. Immersed tunnels are often built in the relatively poor fluvial or glacial deposits of rivers and estuaries with sands and gravels often interspersed with layers of silt and clay. If the soils need to be improved, there are a number of recognized techniques that may be chosen. Granular replacement. Stone columns. Sand compaction piles, SCPs. Soil mixing. Nine foundation of tunnels. Underground tunnel. A effect of tunneling on existing tunnels, buried utilities and foundations. Buried utensils in addition to buildings, it is important not to forget about structures that lie beneath the ground surface, for example existing tunnels and buried utilities. Existing tunnels in terms of the effects of tunneling on existing tunnels, the overall philosophy, though, was to minimize the ground movements at source, i.e. using high specification EPB tunneling machines, and to use a risk-based engineering assessment of the effect of the tunneling works on the existing tunnels. Underwater tunnel. A sand foundation layer. Immersed tunnels are frequently located in poor ground conditions. The foundation of an immersed tunnel can be considered to be made up of two parts. One the foundation layer placed on the dredged surface immediately beneath the tunnel structure. Two the deep foundations in the substrata below the level of the dredged trench. There are two fundamental approaches that may be followed to form this bedding layer. One place the tunnel elements in the trench onto temporary supports, underfill the space between the tunnel elements and the surface of the trench, and release the temporary support. Two lay a close tolerance foundation layer at the base of the tunnel trench that the tunnel elements can be placed directly onto. Methods. A sand jetting method. With this technique, the tunnel element is temporarily supported above the bed of the trench. The sand is then injected into the space under the element. Original sand jetting equipment is shown diagrammatically. It was developed in the 1930s by Christiani and Nielsen, the Danish contractor that was instrumental in the development of concrete immersed tunnels. B sand flow method. A new method was developed in which the sand slash water mixture was pumped directly into the space under the tunnel through holes in the tunnel floor. This was called the sand flow method and has, subsequently, been widely adopted as the usual method of placing tunnel foundations. B. Gravel foundation layers. Gravel bed foundations exhibit different characteristics than sand foundations. Gravel beds offer improved performance of foundations in seismic conditions. Although it is important to guard against shakedown effects, which may cause the gravel layer to compact, the gravel will not suffer liquefaction and can be used to relieve the buildup of excess water pressures in the substrata and reduce the risk of liquefaction and types of gravel foundation is. Underwater screening frames. Screening. X estimation of tunnel. Before planning and estimating the cost of a tunnel, it is necessary to understand the different equipment and work methods that can be used to accomplish the job. Tunnel construction equipment may be divided into three main groups. A. Excavation equipment such as drills, jumbos, tunnel boring machines, road headers, and mucking machines. B. Tunnel haulage equipment such as front end loaders, trains, and conveyors, and C. Service equipment and facilities such as ventilation and air conditioning, generators, hoists, and lights. Methods of estimation. One manual method. Unit cost method. Tunnel cost curve. Two with eight of computers. Cost gen, software. Steps involved in manual method. A. Obtain and study plans and specifications. B. Inspect site. C. Review aerial photographs, geological reports, and boring logs. D. Tabulate quantity takeoffs. E. Obtain quotes from suppliers, insurance, and bonding companies, and subcontractors. F. Determine wage rates. G. Prepare construction schedule. H. Select excavation method. I. Select equipment. J. Estimate cost of equipment rental or purchase. 
K determine crew size and makeup. L estimate progress rates. M estimate cost of above ground development. N estimate cost of tunnel excavation supplies. O estimate cost of tunnel excavation labor. P estimate cost of support and lining supplies. Q estimate cost of plant. R estimate cost of concrete lining labor. S estimate direct cost of other bid items. T tabulate all direct costs. U estimate indirect costs. V estimate camp costs. W estimate escalation. X tabulate total estimated costs of project in format required by request for bid. Unit cost method. The unit cost method of estimating tunnel costs is a well accepted simple technique for making preliminary or planning estimates. It relies on historical records of similar jobs. Basically, the estimator prepares quantity takeoffs for the tunnel and determines the unit cost of each item by comparison with other similar tunnels. Tunnel cost curve. One of the earliest reported developments to improve the reliability and reduce the time required for preliminary tunnel estimates was made by the California Department of Water Resources, 1959. Preliminary estimates to aid in route selection led to the formulation of a family of cost curves. Case histories were analyzed to determine the cost impact of all factors involved in tunneling. They considered four major construction items affecting cost, excavation, support, dewatering, and lining. For each item, a family of cost curves was developed. Each curve represented a specified geological classification. The curves were plotted as item cost per foot of tunnel versus tunnel diameter. Costion software. Costion was developed in 1973 by Harza Engineering Company under contract to the Federal Railroad Administration, FRA, U.S. Department of Transportation. Complete documentation of this program is contained in Report No. Froward ND 74-16, Webby and Seconic 1973. The report is available through the National Technical Information Service, Springfield, Virginia, 22151. Permission by the FRA to use excerpts from this report is gratefully acknowledged. The cost calculations were based on cost curves for different size tunnels and various geologic conditions developed using the Costu program. The method described herein allows the user to develop a more comprehensive and accurate estimate. It must be remembered, however, that the accuracy of any estimating method depends on the accuracy of the required input data. 11 Result in Discussion Analysis of Tunnel Construction Methods Method Convenience Drawback and Multipurpose Drill and Blast Very Adaptable and Flexible Short Mobilization Time Requirement Any required shape tunnel cross-section is possible. Primary rock support can be Safety of workers is a serious issue performance rate of advanced excavation is lower. Total labor cost is high. Involvement of hard and high manual labor. Before beginning the use of tunnel boring machine, drill and blast method was the only economic way for the construction of tunnel. Installed total investment cost is less. Tunnel shape can be changed along the drive length. Low level of automation and mechanization of tasks. DBM. Very high performance and low labor costs. High progress rate, especially in soft ground soil. Excellent cost efficiency and high automation. Level continuous operation. Less noise and disturbance to surrounding structures. Best way for constructing deep and long tunnels. Limited flexibility in response to extremes of geologic conditions. High investment costs and require high backup systems. DBM mobilization take considerable time. Fixed circular geometry and tunnel diameter. Longer mobilization time and higher capital costs. Kuala Lumpur, Smart 2007. 514 million US dollars. Multifunctional include stormwater. Channel tunnel. MB 12.3 BN. Utilities and light rail on lower deck. Checked box. Economical and better quality control. Time of completion is less. Saving in manpower and machinery. No involvement of crane and heavy equipment less involvement of other departments. Needs trained staff and skilled supervision. Imposition of caution order exists for a longer period. No scope of the night working. Once the vertical and the lateral alignment of box disturbed it becomes almost impossible to rectify it. Mainly for road, rail, pedestrian, car parking, office access, machinery rooms, archive and cold storage. Cut and cover. Preservation of the environment. Safe initiation and completion of highway tunnels. Safe work progress in unstable weak ground. May apply to sequential construction in case of most adverse geotechnical conditions. Cheaper and more practical than other underground tunneling. Small risk, relative to other. Not suitable for very deep excavations. More dust and noise impact may arise. Cause interference with traffic and other urban activities. LDB201. Chow Tao Tunnel. 1.4 kilometers. Use only for the construction of several shallow depth tunnels such as rapid transit tunnels, vehicular tunnels, and sewer tunnels. Construction techniques. Immerse tube tunnel. Most suitable for short length as compared to other tunnels. Dredged material was used to create the artificial islands. Suitable for poor riverbed and geological condition. Partly exposed on riverbed risking a sunken ship and anchor strike. Demanding high technologized waterproofing. Impact of tunnel element and embankment on channel or seabed. Careful design connection. Orson Crossing, Denmark, dual two-lane plus rail, 1998. Construction period 7 years, 3.5 kilometers, and multimodal. Thomas and Tunnel, Netherlands. Dual three-lane, 2004. Construction period 5 year, 1 kilometer. DFL 350 million. Submerged floating tunnel. Allows construction of tunnel in extremely deep water. Any type of cross-section can be made. No obstruction to navigational routes. Less harmful effects on aquatic life. Tremendous speed for trains obtained by creating vacuum inside tunnel. Cost of project is too high. It is difficult to rescue people if any fire or hazardous thing happen. No stoppage of train or vehicles. Earthquake and sea is a big challenge. Proposed world first SFT by Norway, NPRA. Predicted cost $25 billion. Discussion. In tunneling projects, it is essential to control and predict the ground surface settlements observed during and after the excavation process that may cause damage to the structures present on the Earth's surface. Otherwise, project time and tunneling costs significantly increase due to damage to structures caused by the surface settlement that occurs above the bearable limits. Therefore, the tunnel construction methods need to be chosen and used very carefully. Also, deep understanding regarding the various aspects and issues related to these tunneling methods is very necessary. Improper use can lead to discrepant results and potential hazard if used in decision making. The selection of each tunnel construction method is done on the basis of their advantages, disadvantages, and limitations. Against this backdrop, the variable density tunnel boring machine is not just a further advancement of the convertible shield additionally an unequivocal development step. Variable density TBM can be very useful over other tunneling methods if utilized and handled properly. 
the idea unmistakably builds adaptability and security inside the tunnel and the machine is generally usable in variable, mixed, ground. For short range and small KM passing with poor ground and geological condition, immersed tube tunneling is best type of construction technique. 12. Conclusion Tunnels are constructed under high mountains and sea coming across the way. Both are necessary as per requirements. It depends on all kinds of things, local planning, does it dot the landscape, ground conditions, future planning of the surrounding area including use and ground levels, usage of the waterways below etc. The practical engineering judgment during the excavation and construction of a tunnel should be applied according to the context and type of problem case encountered. Problems like muck conveyance or face pressure in variable ground conditions within the tunnel alignments require innovative and new tunneling technologies. In this age of advanced tunneling technology, tunneling methods such as drill and blast, NATM, cut and cover, jacked box, slurry TBM, earth pressure balance machine and immersed tube tunnel or SFT may not meet requirements under certain tunnel project conditions concerning economic efficiency and safety anymore.